Okay, so here in InDesign, I'm gonna show you how to work with style sheets. So style sheets are very, very handy because if you have some preset style that you want to apply to your text, um, you can set that up once and um, then you can apply it over and over to your text. It's very handy, especially for large documents like a magazine or something, where the same typeface would be used for the body text over and over and over. And instead of having to go up and pick the typeface and the leading and this point size, you just set it up once. The other good thing about it is, let's say you are working on a magazine, there'll be a team of people working on this magazine, all in different sections of it. It might be not just one designer. Uh, if it's a large publication, that's certainly the case. And um, you don't want someone to make a mistake and you don't want to be the one that's made a mistake. If the style sheets are set up, um, you just apply it to the text that you put in. So what I'm going to show you how to do is I did a page up here. Let me just zoom in on it. Let me get rid of that. Um, so here's a page up here and a sh look at this page here and all I have is three columns of um, body text and don't worry about the pull quote I'll show you that later what I'm gonna do is set the style for the body text and for headings um, I'm gonna do it down here so what I'm gonna do first is I'll just put three columns of text in so just so as you can see what we're doing so I'm going to draw the text boxes first. This you should know from some of the earlier tutorials. Now I showed you guys a website called Lipsum.com, which is great for getting Greek text. Um, but in InDesign there's also a option here. If you go to type fill with placeholder text. Um, and what I can actually do is, if I come up here, will it allow me? I'm going to link these up first of all. I know there's no text in it, but if I click, see this little box down here, and click up there, and if I go back to my type tool and come to this first box, and go type, fill with placeholder text, so it fills it all in. Now let me just, it should, it would normally, okay, it'll probably more than likely look something like this. So again, it is, it's like Greek text, but in InDesign they call it placeholder text, it's both, they both do the same thing. So this is just some standard typeface, what actually is it, by default, Minion. Surprise, surprise, I'm on a Macintosh, so it's a Minion, 12 point type, 14 point leading, just Minion regular. So we know that our body text, if we're working for iMagazine, is 9 point type over 11 point leading, News Gothic regular, okay? So what you need to open is, I'm going to close this down, this little palette. So if you go to Window, styles now for body text what you will be working with is, is something called paragraph styles okay because it's paragraphs of type so we'll just open that up now i actually have them set up here but i'm set gonna set up a new one so you can see it if i go up to this little menu can you guys see that there's a menu up there and go new paragraph style and we'll call it i magazine body type, I'll call it my magazine body type 2 because I already have one here, I magazine body text. Um, so in here, there's an option here on the left, basic character format. So it's set at the moment to Minion Pro. So we'll change that to our News Gothic regular. We want 9 point type. We want 11 point leading. Now there's other bits and bobs in here that are handy. Now there's some that you may not use, certainly at the moment you mightn't, but um, this is a handy one, hyphenation. If you want no hyphenation in the document at all, you turn that off. I generally turn it off. There are options where, you know, words with at least five letters will be hyphenated. You know, you can change some of these, but in general, I either have them on or off. Um, what else might be handy? Character color. Our body text is set to black, but I'm going to show you how to set up <clears throat> some headings as well. And we're going to change the color of them. Now, there's other bits. The strike through, which is like a line through your type. Do you want some letter or some words you might want underlined? You know, in a heading or something. I'll be honest with you. I rarely use some of these. I, I would always use the hyphenation one, advanced character formats and maybe the colours. Um, some of these bullets and numbering you might use at some stage and I'll, but I'll come to them in a, in a different tutorial. 
So I'm happy enough with that. We've set it to what we need for our eye magazine and I'll click OK. And you'll see, look, there it is, eye magazine body type 2. So what we'll do is select all of this type. And if I click on that, OK, so it's made at the right typeface. OK, and it's exactly, let me just highlight it. News Gothic regular 9 over 11. Um, so everywhere in the magazine, once you have that set up and you put any type in, you click on that style and you know that it's going to be filled with the, it's going to be styled to the right style that you need. Okay, let's just, because we need more body text than that. Okay, now we have slightly too much, so, okay, just a tiny bit too much. Let's take some of this out. Okay, so, we have our body text set. That is pretty good. Okay, so, the next thing we want to do, now obviously this is not doesn't read very well. You'd probably have some kind of return spaces in. We've run out of space here. Don't worry about this. This is running out of this box here. We'd probably put another box somewhere on this page and, and link this into the new into the box on this page but for now we, we'll just leave it as is this is all very dense so what I'm thinking is more than likely to, to break up this content we would put some sort of heading in okay so let's this is a heading where else could we have one maybe around this somewhere This is a heading. Okay, so what we would do is we need to set a style for these headings because I know we're only doing two pages in a magazine, but remember, a magazine will have, you know, maybe 80 pages or something or more in it. And if you want the headings to be all the same, you just set that up once. So where are you, the best place to set that up, the, the tab to go to, is this one, Character Styles. It's like paragraph styles with the slightly less options, but for a heading, we don't need it. So again, I have it actually set up here, but I'm going to do a new one. So again, up here, new character style. We'll call it I magazine headings. You know, you might give them a net because you might have different size headings. You might have heading one, heading two, heading three, one being big, two being medium, three being small. So we'll call it headings two. So in basic basic character formats, we're going to pick, I mean, you can pick whatever you like, but I'm going to imagine that we are going with News Gothic. Where is it? F, G, M, N. News Gothic. There we go. But I'm going to make this one bold. And we'll make it slightly bigger. So how about 14 over 16 leading? I don't think the leading will be as big a deal certainly these if these headings are quite small only if the heading goes very long and it goes on to the next line you know you might want to look at the the leading but we'll put it at 16 14 over 16 would be you know fairly standard and um, so let's look at the color so there's some options here so yeah you have your black okay but i want these headings to stand out a little bit you have your cyan magenta yellow black you've got red green blue um now, again, I loaded up some colors here, like Pantone colors. Let's say, for argument's sake, um, the magazine did use Pantone colors, okay? Um, you can load those up, if you want, into this palette. So I'll show you how to do that. If I click in here, okay, so I don't know if you saw that, where this little T is, click in there. So, again, you know, you might decide, you might eyedropper a colour. Let's say there's a photograph up here and it has some lovely colour and you might eyedropper that colour and get the CMYK values and maybe match the headings to, the, you know, a, a colour that's in the photograph. And you would just put those headings or those values in here. Um, another thing, just to load Pantones in, up here where it says CMYK, this, here's all your Pantone colours. Um, so let's go Pantone Solid Uncoded. And again, you would pick these, you know yourselves, we've Pantone swatch books. If you don't have one, try to get your hands on one. If you're in a college that doesn't have one, um, and pick off the Pantone swatch book. Okay, don't do it like I'm doing, just picking it off of the menu here on screen. But let's say for argument's sake, 
you want your headings, let's go with something like, I don't know, a bright pink. Pantone 206, solid uncoded. And we click OK. And you'll see it appears down here. So I'm going to go with that. You can see it's kind of changed up there. And let's go OK. So when I highlight this heading, and it was headings 2, headings 2, so it applies that style to these headings. I mean, they're the, they're the kind of main things to do with style sheets that I think you would need to know. Um, certainly for this iMagazine project, they're probably the two main things that you're going to work with, body text and headings. Um, so yeah, hopefully that was really, really useful.